You know, I like me some tier lists, and especially when Origin's coming out, it's the perfect time to talk about these here bad boys. Yes, there is definitely enough content here to talk about a tier list, because let's be honest, there are so many Origins here, and some of them are great, some of them are okay, and some of them are meh. Yeah, th there's definitely some of that. So let's take a look here at what we have tier list wise what i think is good now first of all we're gonna have to uh, illustrate our tier list it goes from f to s s of course being super a being yes b being okay c being the middle it's like getting a c then of course there is uh d e and f and f is well you get an F. That's basically that. It's it, That's the one that just does not pass. First of all, we're going to be taking it through the order that I found the logos for in the particular folder. Uh, for the logos, that is. I guess that may kind of make sense. So let's dive right into it. Let's start off with Calamitous Birth. Who does not like Calamitous Birth? Well, it is basically you ride the rock... Of course, you ride the rocket is awesome, and you start off as Lithoids. It's the only, uh, it's the only origin that is available exclusively to Lithoids, which adds all sorts of fun stuff. For instance, you get a crater on your planet that increases habitability. Uh, oh, actually, it reduces habitability, but it does increase the amount of resources that you get, as well as the pops that are in the ground, which is delightful. Now, of course, you can get the uh, meteor colony ship which you can slam into other planets to get even more resources and pops. Isn't that just delightful? Especially that uh, growth modifier for lithoids is exceptionally good. However, we need to categorize this. And of course, I did a video about this in the past. I created a live stream about this in the past. So I'm going to need to put it in a category here. Comparatively towards all the other ones, considering what you get, this is definitely a good boost to lithoids itself therefore um i'm going to put it in a nice and solid c yeah i'm gonna put it in a c why in a c particularly well it is good it is not great it is average it's it's definitely uh on par with some of the other ones but it does not shine it's not standing on top of that mount olympus like the zeus that you are looking for then there is common ground now common ground is um is an interesting one because you start off with the uh diplomacy tradition uh adopted and you get the federation tradition on top of that which is a nice little bonus plus you start as the president of a galactic union federation now of course you can go for all sorts of rules within this galactic federation and make sure that you stay in power forever if you really play your cards right but it also really depends on the difficulty level that you're playing as the galactic union is not particularly interesting it is the default federation that you can get and uh, it has a bunch of bells and whistles that i didn't think were particularly interesting but there you go uh, i'm actually going to put uh, on common ground in the d category here uh, this one comes out with uh, with the uh, vanilla build of the game which is a bonus i would guess but uh yeah it's it's kind of nice to have but it is not all that great then there is doomsday doomsday comes with federations i did a very extensive video about doomsday and doomsday is kind of something is an, is an origin that is fascinating because it's the first quote-unquote official challenging uh, origin one would say that some of the other ones like life seeded or the uh tomb world start are challenging ones as well because obviously you won't get tomb worlds everywhere and the same thing with gaia world even though gaia world are pretty strong off the get-go but you have problems expanding but of course then you're going to roll the baul but that's not what we're talking about we're going to talk about doomsday now doomsday is a mixed bag a completely and utterly mixed bag and you are at the well, the you are basically controlled by RN Jesus. That's right, RN Jesus controls your fate when it comes to Doomsday. Uh, you need to find another planet because your capital world will explode within no time. Flat 35 to 45 years is not a lot of time. And as you may have seen in my playthrough of it, it took me forever to find a world that was suitable for my species which was a issue of course there is other playthroughs and you may have experienced this yourself the 
chance of getting another world is sometimes high and sometimes low. I've seen people finding it immediately. I've played some of myself just to test that particular video, and I found a planet next door right away the next year. Now, obviously, you don't get the guaranteed habitable worlds nearby, which is a nice little modifier, but still, Doomsday is cool. As long as you get a good roll, and that is not always guaranteed. I'm gonna put Doomsday... That's right, Doomsday is gonna get a solid A from me. Ah, an A, it's good fun, it's solid. If you wanna have a nice challenge, Doomsday is there for you to play with. And of course, there's the bonuses as well, where you can get those resources on planet and just milk those minerals, energy, and alloys till the last drop, till the very last moment, and then you move everybody off planet, and then, of course, all the ruler pops are gonna be really upset because they don't have any strata or places to work in, which is, of course, unfortunate. Unification! You may notice that this does not sound like an alphabetical order here. No, that's right, because unification is referred to as default. That's right, unification is the default version of the Origins. You will get it with vanilla, which is nice, I guess. Uh, you will get four additional pops at the start, you will get two additional districts built, which uh, is a bit of a mix, and on top of that, you get the Prosperous Unification Homeworld Modifier. Aside from that, you don't get a lot. It's, uh, it's just a flavor thing. It's, it's okay. It's, um, it's the default, so to speak. It, it doesn't really inspire anything new that was already part of the game, and therefore I'm gonna put it in the E category. Yeah, the E category. It is, um... It's standard. It's, it doesn't really add any new challenges, and that's pretty much all we can say. Then there is Galactic Doorstep, which is immediately a one-up from the Prosperous Unification, because, again, this one is part of Vanilla. And it's far more interesting than uh, that previous one could ever hope to be. First of all, you will get yourself a bunch of cool events that are fun, you get some resources, and on top of that, you may get gateway technology really early on within the game. And to be fair, gateways are awesome, they make your empire um, very, very compact and allows you to, well, project your power very early on and uh, in a very efficient way. You can get your troops from A to B really quickly and it's just good overall. And on top of that, it will allow other empires to get research agreements with you sooner because they see that you've got, in fact, a tier 5 technology within your um, library, so to speak. And uh, yeah, you can play around with that. And the fact that it comes with the base game is great. I'm going to give a, this one a B because it has a bunch of cool events and a bunch of cool challenges attached to it, especially when it comes to Gateway Vermin. Because yes, Gateway Vermin is in fact a thing. Hegemon. Hegemon is great. I love Hegemon. It's good fun. It's part of Federations. It's actually, uh, together with some of the other ones that are coming up soon, it's actually one of my favorite ones within the setup. You start off as a Hegemon Federation where you are the boss man, and you can do all sorts of gamey things, obviously, to remain the boss man and make sure that you can swallow up other empires as planets. But that is a really gamey way of doing things. I really like Hegemon for the sheer mechanical prowess and understanding that you need to have in order to make this work properly. It's also one of the few ways to get a hegemon in the game without uh, really messing around with other empires first. The real challenge here, of course, is, is that your other Federation members may not be um, the same ethics as you are, and they may have different traits and different modifiers, and they will also spawn on your guaranteed worlds, which means that you won't get any guaranteed worlds yourself, which is, in of course, an issue. Still, though, I really, really like Hegemon because of the sheer backstabbing potential and the ladder that is chaos that you will need to climb in order to make this work. You get a lot of firepower at the start of the game. You can sacrifice your... Uh, Federation fleet really early on in order to do your bidding and stay in power on top of all the other empires. And once you're done with all the other our empires, you can just go to level three and uh, subject somebody else within your hedge enemy and then take over the other empires. Because with your maneuvering, you should be able to just kick them out at a moment's notice. There is no time for you to wait. So unlike in some other places. And uh, you can just go ahead and have fun. Hegemon for me is S-tier. Yes, that's right. It's the first S-tier one. I love Hegemon. 
a lot. It's really fun. It's super solid, and uh, it it really it really fills fills that need to play with the power. Life Seeded. Life Seeded is one that comes with Apocalypse, I believe. Yes. Life Seeded. It comes with Apocalypse. Apocalypse, of course, introduces a whole bunch of cool starts that were originally part of the Civic system. They have now been imported into the Origin system, which makes perfect sense. But it does get a minus point for creativity there, Paradox. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna let this one slide. Life Seeded is great fun if you want to play the non-official uh, challenge called the One Planet Challenge because you get all sorts of cool stuff. Hey, you get a size 25 Gaia world, you get the uh, district tiles or at least the planetary features for both gas, moats, crystals. You have a lot of flexibility, but of course you're held back by your growth potential. And that is a real shame because Life Seeded is a very fun way to play. And of course, if you will roll the Ba'ul, the sky is the limit because you can just expand wherever you want. Immigration will be super high as well because everybody wants to live on Gaia worlds. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the end of that. No special modifiers for your empire, no special stuff for your species you literally have the preference of living on a Gaia world and that is pretty much it now I would put this under B but considering this is a civic import I am in fact going to put this one in the C category that's right it's gonna go under C together here with uh, with uh, Calamitous birth yes you can hang out with the lithoids it's good times but yeah uh, apocalypse adds a, uh, added this one and it's not really new it's not really fresh but it's still kind of cool remnants interestingly enough remnants is one of those starts that is rather cool because you start off with a relic world that you can eventually turn back into an ecumenopolis without needing the ecumenopolis technology or at least the ascension perks sister sure you still need to gravity engineering to get the um, the actual option to build the Ecumenopolis, but still, it's really good. And Remnants by themselves is a pretty decent start, uh, even though in some regards you could say that it is a planet with a um, a little bit of a wallpaper of a uh, ruined world or a relic world. This is part of the Ancient Relics expansion as well, so... You will need to get that in order to play around with this one. Like I said, it's basically a wallpaper variant where you just can, where you just happen to be able to build a Ecumenopolis on, which I guess is kind of cool. And uh, I guess you get some bonuses of uh, having a couple of um, potential colonies nearby where you can build up and you get a couple of districts there uh, with some resources. Plus, sure, you can get some free technologies using the uh, removal of some of your tile blockers and stuff like that but overall I, I really feel that this one could have been better a longer storyline uh more events attached to it because it's really an rp start like don't get me wrong i like rp to a certain extent but i do like a strong mechanical base and sadly i'm not seeing that here which is a shame uh, i'm gonna put the remnants actually hmm, I'm going to put that under D. Yes, that's right. I'm going to make Remnants a D because of the somewhat wallpapering style design of it, but also the lack of storyline that is here. And it has a lot of potential, don't get me wrong. With a couple more events, it can become C, maybe even B. Uh, there's a lot of potential there. So maybe in the future we will change and we'll see a couple of things. Lost Colony, you spawn as a normal empire somewhere within the galaxy. And there is uh, also an advanced empire somewhere within the galaxy that has the same species as you. You get a special modifier, which I guess is kind of nice because it basically offsets a bunch of things that uh, you have problems with. Because, well, Lost Colony, um, it, it, it does not get the 30% habitability bonus because this is not your original world. But you still get the Colonial Spirit uh, Homeworld modifier which gives you additional amenities as well as a bonus of 10% I believe to habitability or something like that but yeah uh, overall Lost Colony it's inspired by the Commonwealth of Man start and the Commonwealth obviously starts with Lost Colony but overall uh, the interactions with your original world is not all that great. It's not amazing. Uh, sure, you can talk to them. You get a you get a unique communication with them. But overall, it's not all that awesome. It's not like you can uh, join the original empire and then control them or anything like that. So, Lost Colony gets a solid E from A Spec. 
That's right, it comes with vanilla and uh, is basically an iteration on the Commonwealth of Man. There is nothing wrong with that, of course, but it's still uh, something that could have been developed a little bit more. Post-apocalyptic, very similar to Life Seeded, also came with Apocalypse. Another uh, another uh, origin where you start on a certain type of planet. In this particular case, you will start, of course, on a tomb world. And that has all sorts of interesting uh, problems with it. Of course, you start off with the survivor trait, and that's pretty much it. So you can live on a ton of tomb worlds if you want. Uh, you can also start. Uh, you can also live on the uh, worlds that you were originally expect your uh, species for. But you want to get off that rock at some point because, well, it, it's not a fun time living on a tomb world. Let's put it that way. But yeah, uh, tomb worlds, the post-apocalyptic start. It adds a bunch of challenges. Sure, I'm gonna put it under the uh, the joys of the D here. That's right. It's gonna go immediately into the D category because it just does not have the attraction of life seeded. Right? It does not have that life seeded flair attached to it. Uh, it's 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 pretty much similar. You have a, a different planet, but you don't get those resources and you don't get that. Uh, additional challenge of not being able to live on anything but Gaia world. So, Scions. Scions are part of the joys that are Federation. So, what are Scions? You basically start out as a vassal empire of a fallen empire, and you can do all sorts of things except for starting a Federation. And of course, you have the ma the bonus of being able to bring other empires into your Scion form where they will join the Fallen Empire as well. If you're a fan of this sort of thing, then sure, go right ahead. Personally, I don't I don't I really really don't enjoy Scion very much because it is very, very powerful. Events from the Fallen Empire can gift you with a fleet that allows you to subjugate the entire galaxy within the first 50 years of the game, if you're really playing it well. On top of that, uh, the technology you can get, resources you can get from the Fallen Empire really makes this a um, an origin that really caters to players that really don't play Stellaris all that much and really want a power fantasy. You are the Doom Slayer. You are the most powerful person in the galaxy right now. You want to rip and tear. Well, that's where Scions can, can, can come in. Of course, you can also RP it if you really want to and then play it as, oh, we want to liberate ourselves from the yoke of the Fallen Empire and see where it goes because apparently you're in stage two of their test and who knows what they're looking forward to. Maybe uh, yourself releasing, uh, releasing yourself from them could be that test. So you can play it like that. It's fun. It's solid. But it's way too powerful for what it is. And uh, it's a it's a good sandbox experience. But I don't necessarily like it very much. Uh, because of that, Scion actually gets an F. Yes, it gets an F. I really, I really don't like Scion. It's too powerful for what it is. It is sandbox. It's not for me. Look, if you are out there and you're just like, hey, I want to play sandbox style. I want to play some RP. Uh, that's good for you. Like, if you're a new player and you want to try that out, that's perfectly fine uh, for me myself. Tell you what, no, no, I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upgrade it to uh, to E because obviously new people are gonna watch this. If you want to have fun, if you just want to have that power fantasy, go and play Scion. And that's a nice start for for you. It's not for me, sadly. Resource Consolidation comes with Synthetic Dawn and it starts your planet as a machine world and all the other planets within your solar sister have been completely destroyed. Now on top of that, as a machine world, you will get a resource pile of minerals and if you are Ray the assimilator type, you will get a pile of sludge as well so that you can feed your uh, cyborg population as well. Uh, interesting, it's the only one that comes out has come out so far for Synthetic Dawn. It's okay. It's yet again another planetary specific spot and because robots weren't already powerful enough Although in the 2.6.3 patch they have been nerfed a little bit more as well as in the original release for federations because of the lack of uh, Maintenance depots and all that stuff and it kind of shifts over towards the districts uh, It does leave you in a little bit of a pickle But sadly you don't get any technologies or a fast track to build more machine worlds, which is a bit of a shame I would really would have liked the ability to completely ransack other other solar systems and completely annihilate them and then get another machine world because that would have been a really fun experience.
extension of this idea. Uh, it, by itself, resource consolidation is relatively shallow. It's not all that great. And because of that, it's going to get a E. Yeah, that's right. It's going to get an E. Uh, mainly because I just feel there is so much more potential here and it's just a little bit too shallow for me to, to like it. Uh, Mechanist. Mechanist is fascinating to me because Mechanist is used to be one of my favorite civics to start out with. It's a older code, sir, but it's still uh, it's still correct. That's right. Uh, but it by itself, it is actually kind of fun because what does Mechanist do? Well, you start off with the robotic assembly plant on your planet already. You get eight robot pops. You get powered exoskeletons for those mineral bonuses. You get robotic workers and reduction in robot upkeep. Now, in combination with this, Go, this going fanatic materialist and then uh, technocracy as well as diplomatic core the mechanist build can be incredibly powerful for tech rushing especially if you're going down the synthetic path because let's be honest here synthetics have always been extremely powerful and i don't see that changing mechanically anytime soon even though building pops even roma robots in the upcoming patch will cost you alloy so you will have a more alloy focused economy because of this mechanist because it holds a dear spot in my heart but it's just not that s tier it's not even a tier uh, i'm gonna put it in c tier that's right mechanist is gonna have a solid position in b a oh actually did i put it uh, in c tier there we go inside of that c tier because it, it is it is good it is not the most amazing one. And of course, it gets that minus point because it is a ported Civic. And uh, otherwise, it would have been a solid B. If this had been introduced in Federations as a brand new origin, boom. Uh, yeah, Monkey's your uncle. We'll go straight to the B tier because I love the mechanical aspect of it. Shattered Ring. Now, Shattered Ring is definitely not a nature documentary that plays on German TV at 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, basically, what it is, is you start off on a ring world. Now, for the longest time, people have been wanting to be able to start on a ring world, which is interesting because ring worlds are inherently incredibly powerful. Do not underestimate the power of of the ring world uh being able to start off on one of these is just so immensely good and the lore that is added to this this particular system is really fun as well and i i, I do like it to a certain extent um being able to colonize the rest of the ring and build it all up and go into mega structure and having the interloper there plus the uh, special building that gives special resources which can totally be gained by the prosperity tradition tree by the way for free resources Oh yes, that is a thing. Plus the removal of, of uh, tile blockers to get the resources you need to get the districts that you want is a nice addition. Still though, Shattered Ring to me, whilst good, is again extremely powerful if played well. I still like it. It's still a fun start just because you start off on a ring world. Who does not like that power fantasy of being able to start off on a ring world? Looking at you here, Scion, this is how you do this sort of thing. But still, uh, having that shattered ring is really nice. I do like it oh so much. Because of that, it's getting a B tier. Yes. Oh, wow. The controversy. The B tier for the shattered ring. It is, uh, it, it is, it is pretty crazy, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. It is still the one that has a lot of potential RP flavor there with the interloper and maybe building more ring worlds later down the line. I can already hear you scream the hypocrisy that is behind remnants right now. I hear you, but I'm not listening. Still, though, shattered ring for me, B tier. It's good times. Good fun. On the shoulder of giants. Do I need to say anything more about the shoulder of giants that I've already said in the past? Shoulder of giants is by far the origin that has been given the most love from a RP and story point of view when it comes to federations. It is wonderful. I really, really like on the shoulder of giants. When I was initially playing at first, I was like, okay, so we have a bunch of archaeological sites within my solar system. All right, cool. Let's just run them and we get a bunch of events out of it and a bunch of resources and a bunch of tech. That's cool. Okay, well, let's continue playing, etc. And then I got to the mid game. And then all of a sudden, an entire new 
tree of events unfolded where we would go out and see where our benefactors had in actually actuality had gone off to and it sent us onto a storyline that i really really liked it's really good fun uh being able to uh go out there and uh find out what is going on it's really it really encapsulates everything that stellaris is to me or at least should be uh, to anybody that's playing and that is that feeling of discovery and going out there and finding new anomalies, finding new species, finding new events, finding new and uh, other things that are out there, planets and etc. Locked systems, spatial anomalies, uh, planetary systems that are unique. The Shoulder of Giants is really the origin that encapsulates everything that Solaris is for me. From the first day on when a trailer hit, uh, where you have that feeling of wonder that's what On the Shoulders of Giants brings. And because of that, because it rekindled, well, not so much rekindled my love, but still, it really invigorated my love for Stellaris. It gets a solid S tier. Yes, a solid S tier from Acemic. It is just that good. I'm not going to spoil anything. Go and play it. It's so much fun. Syncratic Evolution. Syncratic Evolution is yet a, another um civic that has been lifted from the previous versions of the game and this is from utopia so you need utopia in order to play with syncratic evolution which makes perfect sense you know it came out with that expansion so if you want to play with this origin that's what you need but still uh syncratic evolution if you don't know what it is you start off with 12 pops belonging to a different species a, a, a species you can completely min max to your heart's content in the species design menu and that by itself is already really fun it really allows you to min max your species to the uh, to the maximum it really 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 focuses on the joys that is um trying to fabricate yourself a setup that is perfect but also you can go completely crazy and rp and saying oh yeah this species is actually terrible but we're gonna need to take them into space because we just cannot get rid of them or something along those lines. They're still really good. They get the servile trait, which gives them, um, I believe, less technology output, but it does make them stronger. So basically, they're dumb oafs, which is a little bit uh, Xenoist in my personal opinion, but still. Uh, as always, uh, because this is a lifted civic, it gets a minus point. And because of this, it is going to have a nice seat over in the D spot. It would normally be an AC for me, but of course that minus point really does not do it all that much justice. Still though, uh, Syncretic Evolution is still something interesting to play with, and if you really, uh, if you feel that you want to play with it, you can play around with it within Utopia, which is uh, available uh, pretty much anywhere on sale all the time. So now do yourself a favor and just get Utopia by itself. It is, it is is probably together with federations the best expansion that this game has ever seen and it adds like mega structures and stuff like that so what are you waiting for go and grab this expansion uh somewhere for cheap probably because it came out so long ago tree of life now tree of life uh, okay so tree of life comes also with utopia and this one's really difficult to talk about for me because i really want to like tree of life uh, hive minds by themselves are objectively some of the strongest type of empires that you can play mainly because of their sheer population output and boosts that they can have and basically just do whatever the hell they want because uh, well they they basically uh, they just grow like crazy and especially if you go down the cloning uh, route you can crank out pops like crazy and spread across the galaxy uh, like the virus that you are so though when i initially did the video about the tree of life and i started researching it within the game code etc at least the script files um i felt underwhelmed i felt really underwhelmed by tree of life it's one of those um it's one of those that on paper is really 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 cool but it's not executed very well. And that is a real shame because Tree of Life by itself is a fascinating concept. Just to get you into uh, into place here. You start off with a Tree of Life on your planet. That is a, a planetary feature. Then you any, any planet you colonize will get a Tree of Life sapling on it. And you will get a bonus for it. The, the, the main planetary one gets a uh, big bonus as well. It's mostly like 
pop speed growth and resources from food and stuff like that uh, then on top of that you can transplant the tree of life as well for any planets that you are co have conquered that you didn't directly colonize and colony ships uh cost less alloys but more food which is which is nice sure it's it's nice but if you are an invading species you can still use the tree of life at least in the current version that is that is available as of Federation's launch. And that you should not be, in my personal opinion, and again, this entire tier list is my personal opinion, uh, that should not be happening. On top of that, you can destroy any tree of life or sapling from orbit by applying 50% devastation to a planet. That's fine. But if you destroy, if you destroy the main tree of life, you do not get a global modifier applied to your empire. All the modifiers are all planetary. And on top of that, yeah, um, there, there was this one Death Diary, number 160, which was the Origins full reveal, uh, which is, was Tree of Life, only for Hype Mind. Start with a powerful Tree of Life on your homeworld. Disastrous if you would somehow lose control of it. Uh, colony ships also plant new saplings uh, on colonies. Okay, yeah, that's fair. You get you get more agricultural districts. You get more pop growth speed. You get some society research. You get some housing, and that's fine. But if you currently lose a tree of life, nothing special happens, and that is a real shame. I, I really, really would have hoped that this would be the nexus of the hive mind, and really, really would change things up. It's mechanically super interesting. And I really hope that this is going to be iterated on in the future. But right now, I just, I just literally cannot give Hive Mind my, uh, my blessing, like at all. Like I, I really like the concept, but even, even if you do a really, really, re if you do a book review on something really cool, the book review itself may not turn out very well. And that's why Hive Mind, uh, at least the Tree of Life, gets the only F in this particular video. I. There are so many things that could happen here in order to make this uh, make this better. The mechanics are there. It needs a little bit of tweaking, but right now it's just there is no negative to losing your uh, to losing your uh, your capital world with your with your tree on top of it. Sure, the saplings can be destroyed, and you get a bunch of negative modifiers. Sure, whatever. But losing your capital with the tree of life. It, it could be so much more interesting. And hive minds, I, I've I've bitched about this to a massive extent. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, Tree of Life gets an F. Sorry. Then we have one more. And you've been waiting for this. I know you've been hankering, sitting on the edge of your seat. When is Ace going to talk about Void Dwellers? Well, it is now finally time. We're going to be talking about Void Dwellers. Void Dwellers is part of Federations and is one of those starts that, once again, people have been wanting for a very, very long time. Very similar to what people have been saying about ring worlds being able to start on a habitat. And of course, a species starting on a habitat does not have uh, the ability to live on a planet properly. For instance, if they live on a planet, they will have a minus growth speed of 60. So going with planets is really not the way to go for Void Dwellers. You really need to focus on that alloy economy to build more habitats because that's the way to go. And that by itself is really interesting because it really forces you to juggle your population constantly and move them to new habitats and stopping population growth on this place and making sure we've got enough districts and housing over here. And it really becomes a, uh, like I said, a juggling event. And by itself, Void Dwellers also takes makes use of the... Um, the habitat system where if you, for instance, build over a research deposit, like for instance, some physics, you will get the research uh, uh, districts within your habitat. Same for mining, energy, etc. It's it's so cool. I really, really, really like Void Dwellers. It's mechanically probably one of the most challenging origins out there. Uh, it's extremely cool from a gameplay point of view, and even from an RP uh, point of view. It really encapsulates everything that you would want from a space base start. This one right here, this particular origin to me, is pretty much lightning in a bottle. If I had an SS tier, I would put Void Dwellers in SS tier. Now, I don't have that tier, so in the meantime... I am going to have to put that in a different one. It's just going to have to go in S tier until I come up with like the um, refrigerator of coolness or super coolness, just like they did back in the day on Top Gear. But Void Dwellers to me 
is mechanically complex. It requires a lot of micromanaging. Well, not micromanaging, but understanding the mechanics behind the game and planetary management, as well as being able to focus your economy properly to do what you need to do. And that right there, that challenge is really up there for me. It's better than Doomsday when it comes to sheer challenge. Sure, uh, On the Shoulder of Giants is there as well, but that one has just a super developed storyline. Hegemon, uh, it's mechanically interesting as well. Very, very fun to play with. But Void Dwellers, yeah, it, it just sits there as the crowning jewel of the origins within Stellaris. It is so much fun. And there you have it, the tier list for Origins. There are, of course, people out there that will say, Acevec, you are wrong about this Origin. Tree of Life does not deserve to be in the F spot. It is definitely a solid C with improvements with tweaking. Yeah, well, that may be the case, but this is my opinion. So, yeah. Uh, in the meantime, though, if you have any opinions, feel free to put them below. I'm really, really curious about what you think about this particular list. If you agree or not, if you think you had a fun time with any of these origins, I'm all ears. If you say, if you want to tell me a story about, man, this one time I stopped with, uh, I started off with uh, On the Shoulder of Giants or Mechanists or Calamitous Birth and I had such a fun time with that. Feel free to post it below. I'm really, really curious to hear your stories because in the end, space is but a blank canvas that we paint our stories on and that is what Stellaris is. And being able to tell those stories to others is really what makes it all worthwhile. I'm going to go and wrap this video up here, but not before I talk about something important. I'm not going to be talking about my Patreon this time around, even though if you want to get involved, whatever. That's that's really cool, but that's not what this video is all about. Uh, in a couple, uh, in a month from now, as of the release of this video, my daughter will become one years of age. And that, of course, is a momentous occasion. And I have a problem with that. And that is, is that I'm currently in quarantine in my home country of Germany. I uh, I could leave the house whenever I wanted to on like important things, but a birthday party, it's completely out. It's not going to happen. It's uh, we don't want to, you know, spread the disease or anything like that. Uh, we're not going to talk about what it's called because YouTube likes to uh, <clears throat> nuke it from orbit. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you want to do me a favor and this is not uh, this is this shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Uh, I would really appreciate, though, if you would get involved. I know times are really tough right now for a lot of you out there, uh, whether or not you've become unemployed or have been furloughed or anything like that. But I want to request something from you. In the comments below, or at least in the description of this video, is a address to a P.O. box that I have opened up uh, about a year ago, actually, and I was going to get around to actually open it up to the public. However, this, I feel, is the perfect time to uh, do so. And what is this P.O. Box? I would like you to send my daughter a card. Just a birthday card. Doesn't have to be anything special. Uh, if you want to send something just for me or fan letters or whatever, that's fine as well. But if you would be so kind, dear viewer, to send my daughter a one-year-old birthday card, I would love that. And I'm sure she would love that as well, even though her cognition currently is at the same stage as a lemur still though if you want to do that that'd be great if not well i thank you for listening to this message of all the expansions that have been uh, featured in this video or at least origins and of course they are part of different expansions there's a link down in the description below if you want to pick up any of these expansions and be like hey yeah i want to definitely play with um life seated or with uh relic world or anything like that uh, the link is down in the description below we'll take it to the paradox store i will get a cut of those sales and that of course helps me out as well because uh, tiny lemurs need food apparently so that's something that needs to be sorted out too anyway we're gonna go and wrap up this show here thank you so much for watching and until next time take good care of yourself and remember even though tree of life is currently not all that great just remember, this may all change in the future. Good day.